Hey my friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're up here doing an off-road test, doing some rock crawling, some going up hills and doing some moguls and things like that in the ultimate Toyota Tacoma off-road vehicle, this being the TRD Pro. And look at this color, Voodoo Blue. Pretty exciting, huh? I am kind of excited. Anyway, so I'm gonna show it to you inside and out really quick and then we're gonna get to, uh, well, get down to dirty business. All right, before we get going, I want to talk about styling just a little bit because this has a lot going on that really sets it apart from the standard Tacomas out there, even the TRD off-road. And the first, let's look right there at the face. This has a very unique grille. It has a very retro look, very reminiscent of the Land Cruisers back in the 60s and 70s with the Toyota lettering right across it. Headlights, though, on this one, they're actually not exactly the latest, greatest technology. These are projector beam headlights, but they do have LED driving lights down below in the bumper. They've worked with Rigid to create some Rigid branded LED fog lights. The big money really, if you look down under the bumper, that is that skid plate. A big thick aluminum skid plate, not only stamped, but emblazoned with color, that TRD Pro logo. I think it looks pretty sexy, especially when you're sort of underneath it and it's coming up on you. Hood scoop element. You'll notice the graphics on this truck, something not exactly seen in the brochure. This is an optional accessory that uh, comes in at the tune of $699, the TRD Pro graphics package. Looks very cartoony, very Transformers, very Marvel. I like it. It's a lot of money, but I, I think it really adds to the truck, particularly back here on those rear quarters. That's something you can see from across the parking lot and uh, along with these nice emblems on the doors really sets this truck apart visually. Wheels, 16 inch alloy wheels. They're black TRD, unique to this truck. Goodyear Wrangler tires with Kevlar, that really helps them be strong when it comes to getting over sharp rocks and things like that. That's what they're for. And lastly, this thing sits a little bit higher. We've got TRD springs with a one inch lift in front, Fox internal bypass shocks, big 2.5 inches, nice and thick and meaty. You can put your hands around them. And that really helps with the ride and, and some of the handling off-road. And that's really what big thick ones are for. It's all about the handling. And uh, down here on the lower part of the truck, you can see these running boards. Now, these appear from a distance, they might be rock rails. Now, the Chevrolet ZR2 Colorado has rock rails standard. This does not. These are just tube steps. So you don't want to pretend these are rock rails and scrape them over rocks because they're not going to protect you. But they do look very nice. They do help getting in and out of the truck. They're rubbery and grippy. And at the rear of the truck, again, you can tell that this is indeed the TRD Pro. There's the logo there. This also has the set-in lettering option. So instead of just the indented, you've got, you've got the sticker emblems there, which looks kind of sexy against this color. Voodoo blue, who would have thought? The interior of the TRD has a few upgrades that sort of set it above most of the other Tacomas. Uh, one of those being leather seats. Uh, leather seats weren't always found in the Tacoma except for the Limited. And you'll find them here in the TRD Pro with those beautiful logos up on the headrests. The seating position in here, I do have to complain about though. This is an architecture that's been around for a while. And so I still feel like I'm sitting in a 1990s Toyota pickup truck. It's very, it's very shallow as far as the cab. There's not a lot of adjustment here on the steering wheel as far as tilt and telescope. So getting the right seating position has been quite difficult here. These are not power seats at $48,000 and some change. I don't have power seats. They are heated though. A lot of features though are standard for 2019 now. The moonroof now standard in the TRD Pro as is this new JBL audio system standard equipment. Uh, otherwise this interior is pretty nice. I've got a leather wrapped steering wheel, TRD shift knob. This also has uh, some optional mats here that are pretty rugged looking. You can see they're already dirty. We've been out here in the, in the rough. All the controls up at the top, you've got the controls for the crawl control and a lot of the off-road toys. Along here on the center stack, you've got controls for everything else. Extra USB ports also added for 2019. This is one of the areas that I've bitched about before with the Tacoma and uh, well, they haven't made it any bigger back here, so I, I'm not going to belabor it. But uh, as you can see, it's a little bit snug back here. Uh, and for a couple reasons. The, the main reason being, you know, we talked about this truck being kind of old. Um, not a very big cab. So uh, leg room at the first. Uh, my knees are up against this seat. And this seat's adjusted for me. I'm about 5'9", so I'm a medium-sized person. 
Um, if I were a taller person, whomever was sitting back here would really be screwed. The other thing is the seating position is pretty low. Um, as you can see, my knees are perched up like this. I feel like I'm sitting down in a hole. And as I sit back here, there are no vents for me in 110 degree heat in Arizona. There are no USB ports, none of those other things for $48,000. So I sound like I'm bitching, don't I? Well, here we are. We're at uh, the Butcher Jones Recreational Site just out of Phoenix, Arizona, just above Saguaro Lake. And you're going to see that here in the pictures in a minute. This is a place I like to take off-road vehicles to test them because while it's not super high-end black flag technical, it's, it's more technical than most people are ever actually going to use their vehicles for. And it gives us a chance to test some of the traction toys that this has and actually see if they work and how easy they are to use as well as see how well this thing articulates some difficult spots. So I'm getting ready to go up this rock face here. First thing I am going to do is put this in four low and it's as simple as throwing it in neutral and twisting the knob and I am good to go. Now this is a really steep, just a nice rock face that doesn't have anything loose on it. And when I put this down in four low, what that does is it gives us that low gear ratio for climbing that works very well. And even with the V6, which has a pretty low amount of torque, 265 pound feet to be exact, um, not a lot of torque here from this 3.5 liter V6. 273 horsepower though. The V6 gas that's in the Colorado does have more horsepower and torque. So um, this is the lesser on that wavelength, but getting to what we're doing here. This is a really nice tight spot. A lot of moguls and rocks that you really sort of have to navigate through here. So this extra ground clearance that this has uh, really comes in handy. A lot of suspension articulation. One thing I'm noticing here is I'm getting some creaking in the suspension as this thing twists. One inch lift in the front, progressive rate springs in the back, and these Fox 2.5 inch internal bypass shocks. The thing about off-road shocks though is that, you know, you've got to tune them someplace. You've got to tune them for off-road or you've got to tune them for working on the pavement. And I think what they've done is they've sort of gotten a compromise here because these are still pretty stiff. They feel like street shocks to me. But they do have that extra travel that's available. Now we're in a little bit of a challenging spot here, so I'm taking it easy. This truck is very maneuverable. The steering's got a pretty heavy weighting on it, but there's a lot of steering feel. You can feel when you need to let it sort of pull itself like that. Whew. Now, this hood scoop's pretty cool. It definitely looks cool, but one thing I don't like about it is it makes it a little bit more difficult to see what's in front of you. It's a, it's a little bit of a hindrance, I think, in that way. challenging to pick a line through this one particular spot and get it just right there we go now we've just gotten ourselves in a spot that is why that rear locker exists the rear wheel as you can see is hanging off even with all the articulation the suspension has it's hanging in a spot that just doesn't allow it to have that traction. So luckily we do have one. I just need to shift this into neutral, reach up here and press the button. And now the indicator light is on. I've got rear lock and see how easy that works. It's like pressing the magic button. It is the magic button. When you put this in four low, one of the things that happens is the computer manipulates the throttle such that it makes it less sensitive so it's more easy to sort of manage when you're going through a tough spot like this so you're not hitting a bump and hitting the throttle and causing this thing to goose and it makes it easier to sort of modulate your speed in these spots and keep it going. Now there's also the crawl control that this has where you can set it at a speed and just take your foot off the gas and the brake and it'll control your speed no matter what. That's really great for mud and certain other situations. I'm one of these old fashioned guys. I don't like, I just don't like that. I like to be able to stop when I want to and go and, and have that control. All right, so that was really the challenging part. Um, 
what does it prove? It proves the truck's capable. That rear locker is a lifesaver. It's something that any serious off-road vehicle should have. I will point out though, um, Chevrolet Colorado has a front locker. This does not. Now this has a software system that can enable that to work when you use some of the traction toys, but it's not a true locker. We are now at the top of the hill. Whew, last bump. Now we're going to turn that rear locker off. Now I'm gonna put this down in two wheel drive now because quite frankly, for this part of this, we just don't need four wheel drive. Now what we're gonna do is kind of go a little faster on a trail here. Now this section of our drive really kind of gives me a, a good thumbnail on what these shocks and springs are like. What do they make this truck like driving out on a rocky trail? Ooh, well, ooh, dang. They're pretty stiff. That's really what I'm getting out of this. <laughs> this thing is very stiffly sprung and these shocks um, don't have a lot of the marshmallowy compliance that I typically like to have in an off-road vehicle. Something I found in the Chevy Colorado ZR2 is it was very compliant in this particular section. Uh, it wasn't really jarring in its ride. Um, this I tend to find, not only is it stiff, but because this frame and the design of this truck tends to be a little older, I'm getting a lot of shaking and rattling in this structure, a lot of rattles here, even with this four-door cab. Now, that doesn't take away from its capability. It's still rolling along through this rough, rough trail pretty good. You just feel every single you're just feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling every bump. Ah. But, you know, if you're willing to be a man and take it, you can go as fast as you want. The truck will do it. Ah. Another favorite spot here is the sand dunes. Gives us a little bit of a chance to get some more speed up because it's a little softer. And I can feel how this thing gets in the moguls a little bit. Woo. This is fun. This is what it's all about. Woo. A little sideways there. So out here, the suspension being as stiff as it is is fine because it's soft. It's soft stuff to drive on. And this has all kinds of traction toys to help you get through that deep sand if you were to get stuck. Um, I tend to like just driving fast enough so I don't sink into it. So there you have it. There's the off-road trip with the TRD Pro. All right, I had a great time test driving this truck. Off-road, that's what these things are all about. And this place is great for that because it offers a little bit of rock crawling, a little bit of sand dunes, and a little bit of blowing and going down the rough road. Gives me a chance to see how it behaves in all of those places, as well as the time I spent on the highway in the city around home. Um, so let's get to my three key takeaways here. The first one being this is the ultimate Toyota Tacoma. At 48 grand, including all of its options, it's really hard to spend a lot more money on this truck. You can get the Limited, which is sort of a different flavor, a little bit more luxurious, but when it comes to equipment and content, we're, we're right in the same neighborhood, just a different flavor. This one, much more masculine, macho, with its lift and all of its manly design elements. I love it, and I love this color too the ultimate. Second thing though, uh, sort of the other side of things, this is a very old truck. It's been around for quite a while with very few changes. Yes, we got a visual update uh, and a substantial update inside and out a couple years ago, but the bones of this truck have been around for quite some time, designed back almost in the 90s, and it feels that way when you drive it going down the road. It's handling, sitting in the interior the way it's designed in its size and its shape. Uh, there's not a lot of adjustability there to get a comfortable position like you can find in the Chevrolet Colorado or even in the new Jeep Gladiator. It's just, it's got old thinking when it comes to how it's laid out. And there's nothing they can do to fix that other than completely redesign it. So those are areas where this truck's starting to feel old. And it still has some Toyota-isms, like when you slam the door, they have that tinny microwave door sound to them uh, that sort of belie its $48,000 price tag. It uh, kind of reminds me of my old Scion when I slam the door, which is not a good thing, not a bad thing, but it brings us to my third key takeaway is it's got Toyota quality. You know, even though it has that tinny door like my old Scion, my old Scion, I drove it to 230,000 miles and then I cast it off to a family member and they're still driving it. 
you know, I mean, the cars last forever and they, uh, they might have tinny this and they might have kind of chintzy that, but they don't break. I mean, if you've owned Toyotas, you know this, you know I'm not full of crap there. And so those are my three key takeaways. It's the ultimate, yeah, it's kind of getting old, but they're still the best selling truck out there because they have resale value and quality and they look kind of cool. So there you have it for the TRD Pro Tacoma. Now, if you like the test drive, I invite you to click on the big square right there and see my latest one or Better still, click on the round logo down there and subscribe to my YouTube channel because, well, that's really what you want to do, isn't it?